I think one of the greatest challenges that we find when we're involved in ministry or as you are involved in learning about God is where do you find the time? You know, you have your schedule, you have your things you want to do, you have your things that you should do, and then you have your things that you ought to do. And in all of these things, where do you find the time? <laughs> For me, it's amazing because how I find time is in the Lord. Because you see, I had this opinion based upon, well, quantum physics, to put it bluntly, but it's really based upon the Bible first. And then quantum physics later proved to me that it was accurate. And that is what's called the delineation or the desegregation of time itself as an aspect of cons consistency or inconsistency. In other words, the inconsistency of the time equation. Meaning that your perspective of time may not be accurate given your relative position of where you are in time. I know I'm going to lose everyone on this one. It's like... Everybody went, right, <laughs> where did that one go? Well, you see, it's like this. I'll bet you think gravity is even, that if you drop something, it all drops at the same pace. It doesn't. We've already proven now that gravity is unequal, that on one part of the world, there's actually gravity pools and gravity things that happen that, no, gravity isn't the same everywhere, and some things will drop at a different rate. Just one of those things that, you know, when we grew up, we thought we knew what we were talking about. And so we take these assumptions and we think that they're true until one day we're proven, oh, I guess it wasn't true. <laughs> Just like in the old days, they used to say you couldn't go faster than 40 or blow your brains out because the wind blowing up your nose would blow your brains to the back of your head and blow it out your ears. <laughs> uh, it didn't work out that way. <laughs> Or maybe it did, I don't know. I've been at 100 miles an hour before, and maybe it was. <laughs> but the point being is that there are a lot of ideas that are wrong until, you know, we think they're right at the time, or people do, and then they prove them wrong. And time is another one of those things, because God can stretch time, God can make time, God can change time. You could step out of the time element and exist in the eternal now, which is what we're going to happen when we step out of this physical world that we're in and step into eternity. Where I got this original idea was from was when God, in the Old Testament, answered a prayer. And I think it was Joshua who said, uh, could you make the sun stand still for a minute? You know, because I got, I got some work to do. So he went out and killed and got his work done, and then the sun started moving again. Boy, isn't that stretching a coffee break? <laughs> and you may have read that, but you didn't realize that it was true. Well, it is. And I know for myself, wow, well, Lord, <laughs> yet I share it. I know for myself, okay, here we go. And you thought I was going to blow you out of the water with time. Oh, boy. For myself. There was a time when I was, time and time, I was laying on the couch and I, I was talking to God. I had been out in the backyard and this was in the early days of the Jesus movement and or early days for me of the Jesus movement. It was kind of like in the 70s, so kind of later. And uh, I was looking up in the heavens and I was praying to God, you know, my father alone. Nobody saw me. I was all by myself. And uh, I remember God taking his finger and just tracing it across the sky because... One of the things that you don't realize, maybe, is that you, know, you really can't trace a falling star across the sky, and you can't really make an arching comet go across the sky from one horizon to the other. But God can, <laughs> with his finger. Anyways, we won't even go into that one. Some other time we'll explain that. But I was like, whew, just amazed by what I was experiencing, because I was talking to God, the Father, about the difference between why I wanted to know the Father, because I didn't quite understand the Son. I was kind of getting all the Spirit, Son, and Father down, you know, because I, I knew they were all different, but I didn't quite know how. So I was talking to God about it, and I said, Father, I just want to know you. And then God just went like that, and I felt, 
him just bless me. And I was like, wow. And I went down in the dirt. I mean, I do go down in the dirt. I didn't fall down, but I got down on my hands and knees and face, you know, and I was blowing dust, you know, dirt, <laughs> literally. And I was just worshiping. I was so thrilled, you know, that God was so real and so I felt so different than I felt when I was experiencing the Holy Spirit, when he baptized me and then filled me with the Holy Spirit and when I got saved, which was all three emotional experiences, very much so. So this was completely different. Well, then I was so amazed that about an hour later I got up and I went inside the house, you know, got cleaned up and so I was laying down back on the couch, you know, and I was just kind of staring at the ceiling and I was thinking, you know, Lord, I, I don't understand this fear of the Lord. You know? I don't understand how people can be afraid of you, God. I don't know what fear is. And as I finished saying that, the, it was night, but the roof of the room, or the ceiling of the room, became a mass of cloud, just there. I mean, there was no roof ceiling there anymore. It was just a mass of cloud. And I wasn't moving, and I wasn't breathing. And I wasn't saying, and I wasn't thinking. I was existing, and I could tell that I was existing. And I stayed that way for over an hour. And at some point in time, probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes into it, I knew I was alive, and I knew after about 20 minutes that I was dealing with God. And I knew kind of like after about a half hour that, you know, this was... I was experiencing something that God wanted to show me. And after an hour, I knew what the fear of the Lord was. <laughs> Whew. You know, and um, I'm not one prone to believe in other people's, you know, weird mutual experiences or, you know, some Pentecostal type description of heaven, hell, or whatever. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> if you pin me down, I might admit what I've experienced to you sometime, but. I try to avoid that kind of stuff because people get all wrapped up into the experience, you know. They want to know these ooh, supernatural things and yeah, ain't much I haven't experienced. <laughs> That's don't talk much about it. And there's good reasons why. Uh, but I knew from that moment on that time, God could take you out of the time continuum and it could be changed for you to stretch it or to change it or to rearrange it because I knew I should have been dead. <laughs> I couldn't even tell my heartbeat. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I should have been dead. Brain dead at least. Anyways, I was alive. You know, when I got done, I was like, all of a sudden when the, literally the cloud was gone and the ceiling was there. <laughs> it's the only way to describe it. And I'm a writer and I really can't describe it to you. It's, different you know I don't even know how to quite describe it to you but when it was gone it was like all of a sudden just whoosh like a rushing expansion in my lungs of breathing again you know it was like whoa and I took deep breaths and I was like wow and I just sat there just going wow and then I started when put a praise tape on, I went, wow, praise the Lord, and this was cool, but I don't want to do that again. <laughs> it was definitely unique. But there were, from that moment on, times where I began to examine this thing that had happened to me, as well as this whole idea of time, and I began to pray, according to my experience and the scriptures that I found, that if I was in a circumstance, you know, where I needed more time to get something done, I'd say, Lord, could you, could you just kind of slow time down so I could get all this done? I could tell you that there are some things that there was no physical possibility of being sped up, slowed down, or whatever that I got things done, and they got done, you know, in the time span. And I was like, "Wow, Lord, this is cool. Do you do this for other people too?" <laughs> you know, I mean, I was, I'm kind of like a little kid with, well, God, because he's bigger than I am. I mean, you know, what are you going to say to him? I mean, he's awesome. I mean, if you really get to know him that way, if you don't, well, okay, you know, I mean. All right, you know, whatever you want to get to know him as. But for me, it was like, ooh, this is cool. I mean, everything was like a science fiction story come to life. And I was like, wow, God, you can really do this? And so he messed me up for the, 
universe because, frankly, I I don't have a problem with you know like God intervening anytime He wants to because He already did. So I'd love to say that you know this isn't true, but <laughs> there's no explanations. You know, and I'm kind of pretty good scientific data. You know, and it's just like <laughs> there's no way to prove or disprove something you know you saw and experienced. Ooh. So, in time, I was blown away by this whole idea that you could expand time and you could change time and that you, God could make time and arrange time for you to experience it in such a way that all of it could be contained within that element that he describes within whatever time period that you're experiencing. So I got all my stuff done, you know, and different times, you know, I prayed and God just said, no, you know, it's like, oh, well, okay, fine. And I didn't meet my deadline. <laughs> But there are other times where, yeah, God definitely slowed things down. And today, it was amazing to me because God's been telling me to slow down. And I've been going, uh, are you kidding? <laughs> you see my schedule. You want me to slow down? And I added so much more today to what I normally do because I have a certain amount of time I try to get certain things done. Usually before my wife gets home from work. And uh, then I, you know, kind of take a break from ministry, spend some time with her, and then go back into ministry work. But today, God said, you know, take some time off. And so I would take a time off, kind of doing other things, you know, and then coming back to ministry or whatever part I may be doing in the ministry, whether it be, you know, internet research, commentary, uh, postings, videos, editing, you know, schlepping, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is I'm doing. But today, God kept expanding, or well, yeah, expanding time and making me able to get all kinds of stuff done to reinforce the idea that I could rest and still get everything done I wanted to. Man, so I don't know what you're like, you know, but you, know, you ought to kind of take everything to God, you know. I mean, it may blow your mind just exactly what He can do if you really let Him be God and you just kind of accept. You know, that you don't have it all up here. You know, your understanding doesn't work that way. You know, it, it's kind of like time is a man-made concept that only exists within these parameters that we, we live in. But we're spiritual beings, so we could exist outside of that time dimension. And I don't think you really understand all the dimensionality of time, but I do. And maybe, okay, I don't understand all of it, but I understand pretty much quite a bit about what we all discuss in the scientific community. And... In relating that to scriptures, I find myself amazed at what God can do in using those things to apply them to prophecy and to scripture and to life and to my experiences that I've had with God, <laughs> changing time or dealing with time. Because, you know, I love this. This always cracks me up. They always say, well, God said in the universe certain laws and he can't, tr he can't transgress them. He will not cross over his own laws. <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> I mean, the idiot that thinks up these questions to tell what God can or can't do doesn't seem to have a big enough picture of what God is. And then they try to put some finite boundaries over an infinite being. So you just, if it's a dimensional reality and you put parameters, meaning boundaries, in one dimension and he exists in other dimensions, then he's already enveloped all of those parameters. Do you get that? Think about it. You'll get it. So anyways, I've been blessed. It's been nice. I've been able to relax, to take it easy, to have more energy, which is what I've been really praying about because I've been not able to, since this holiday season, I always get kind of burned out. And not because of the holiday, but just because of this time of year. But it's been like, wow, Lord, today has been nice, you know. You can get all this stuff done and lots of energy. And, man, I feel like running a marathon. <laughs> we which have believed do enter into rest. They weary themselves to commit iniquity. I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace for when we stand, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. He that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. This is the rest wherewith you shall cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. If we had to be so consumed and concerned about our own sinfulness, and we do sin, and I, I do, you know, I still struggle with different areas of my life that God is, you know, he's making progress, you know, what can I say? You know, a lot more progress lately, thank God, it's been a long time in coming, some of these things, but no, I mean, I can look over the years and see a lot of progress, you know, it's just different areas God deals with, you know, you, it comes up and you deal with it, actually, you give it to him and he deals with it, but you find when you are not so consumed about worry and anxiety and fear and anxiousness that you have peace. And when you step back away from whatever's making you anxious and you look at it and you just smile and just think, man, I ain't nothing to worry about. Or you don't worry about it and you just give it to the Lord. You just, you just kind of beam, you just kind of glow. You just have a a feeling inside, you know, and it's just a nice, relaxing way to be at peace. So I hope that in sunsets and in sunrises, in the cool of the day at some point in time, three times a day, you find a place, a moment in time, a moment could stretch into hours, who knows, a moment in time to rest in the Lord. Be still with your God to quietly meditate on Him and His Word. Because if you do, if I and my experiences are any example of what can happen, wow, will you be amazed at what God can do with you?